Welcome back to the Blue Chip Breakdown, Vols fans. I'm your host, Bull. Happy Labor Day to everybody. I hope that y'all are enjoying that time off. If you got some time off, that's excellent. But I think that we had a really nice weekend of college football, the first real weekend. I feel like I learned a lot about, you know, who's kind of where. And of course, as the season wears on, we'll know a lot better. But I do feel like our Tennessee Volunteers are one of the teams that you have to mention as a potential playoff team uh, just very early on in this process. And we will, you know, I'll give you some of my, uh, you know, takeaways and thoughts on the UT Chattanooga game. We'll put a bow on that week. Going ahead and turn the page to NC State. We'll be taking a look at their offense today. And of course, the film breakdowns will be out for our team's defense and then NC State's offense. That'll be out tonight for the members. Thank y'all so much for being members. And if you would like to become one, help to support this channel, keep us growing, just click the join button just below this video. You will get the exclusive content that we can't share on this side of YouTube. But again, man, we appreciate y'all so much. Also, huge weekend for donations. Thank y'all so much. Please keep those rolling in. As little as a dollar, if you scan the Cash App QR code, wherever it is on this video, that is a great way to support us. And we will have things open uh, for people to join us on the live streams this weekend, whether it's pregame or postgame. Make sure that you're signing up. You're going to have until Thursday at 8 p.m. to get signed up. We hope to see some more people. And a really big shout out to Timmy G for joining us, man. He's He's been awesome. I think he's probably going to be joining us for every show that he can moving forward, uh, you know, as far as the uh, weekend streams go. But thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. Please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Let's go ahead and jump into it. All right. So let's take a look at the box score from this game. Of course, we won it 69 to 3. I think that the team from top to bottom played about the way that I thought they would. Now, Nico right up here at the top, he did sort of exceed my expectations. I mean, he's absolutely incredible. He's the truth. I mean, and that's why we hear so many people, we see so many videos and stuff coming out with film breakdowns of Nico. People are starting to buy into that hype. So I think that he is going to be just fine. Starts the game off 10 for 10. Yes, it's versus UT Chattanooga and all that type of stuff, but it really doesn't matter. But any, you know, anytime that we are doing film breakdowns of the high school players, Y'all know that sometimes we'll bring up, we don't know what the level of competition is like, but other times you don't even need to, just because whenever you're dominating on that sort of a level, you can just tell that that is going to translate. But he's everything that we wanted inside of this offense. I think that he's, you know, about the best uh, at operating this offense as we might ever see. He is literally built for it. So he's going to have a phenomenal, phenomenal season. I think just because of him, we have a great shot to beat anybody in the entire country. Now, we are actually going to skip past the rest of the quarterbacks. I'll talk about them briefly here. Gaston Moore didn't look great in his first outing. I think that obviously Jake Merkling, he looked a lot more solid and more in command. But Gaston Moore is a veteran. We still trust him. Sometimes you're going to have bad games, and he definitely had one. Uh, it, it wasn't horrible, but he did not play his best by any means versus Chattanooga. Now, let's talk some about our running back room. I love what Dylan Sampson did. He's showing up. I feel like he can carry the load for the rest of the season. But, I mean, obviously him, you know, having 10 yards per carry, 12 carries for 124 yards, three touchdowns. You got to be impressed with the way that he ran in between those tackles, kind of making people miss, making things happen, taking care of the football. That's always going to be very important. Now, moving on to the rest of our running backs, I like what I saw. I think that Deshaun Bishop ran well. You see he's averaging 12 yards per carry. He got into the end zone. I think that Cam Seldon looked pretty good, uh, you know, in between those tackles, things like that. Now, there was a couple of holes that he kind of missed. He's going to have to work on that. He's not as much of an in-between the tackles runner as he is a guy that you get the football to him out in space. And I think that that's going to be our plan versus some of these better teams. We might see that this upcoming weekend versus NC State. I also think that Khalifa Keith looked really dominant running. We saw him kind of bulldozing through people running hard. So we do have a stable, y'all, of some running backs that I feel like are going to be just fine. Also, Peyton Lewis, uh, you know, he didn't look great in his first outing. But as he gets more acclimated to just – playing college ball, you know, playing on this level, he will have his moments, believe me when I tell you that. So again, I love this room. I also love the fact that we would motion running backs out uh, and just go empty. So I think that we will throw the football to our running backs a little bit more this season. Several more things that I, you know, kind of want to touch on, but let me get to the offensive line first. Before I forget, I think that we looked great up front. Nico had plenty of time to pass. Now there were a couple of things that I didn't like as far as the pass protection went. Um, you know, number one, it still feels like we kind of get beat with speed, especially uh, I would say John Campbell on the right uh, on on the right side, he wasn't as impressive as I feel like he should have been. I don't know if he's maybe kind of dealing with a little bit of you know small minor tweaks here and there, but seeing him kind of getting bull rushed once where he had to hold, you don't want to see your guys getting bull rushed versus UT Chattanooga. I don't think that that's a good look at all. But it, he still looked really good. He still looked solid. Lance Hurd looked absolutely incredible. He looked phenomenal. And then also um, guys like Larry Johnson come in. I saw him kind of getting beat with speed to the outside once. I think I saw John Campbell maybe struggling with that just to taste. 
So that's still, uh, maybe it's some sort of an issue with our scheme, how we get into our pass sets, whatever it is, that's going to have to get cleaned up, I feel like, moving forward. But um, yeah, I mean, I was just very impressed with how much time Nico had to operate for the most part. Um, and then, you know, I think on the, the one time that Nico did get sacked, I think that that was from some sort of a, you know, miscommunication with how we were, uh, you know, blocking that, you know. So I think that the protection was off. I don't know if that's on Nico. I don't know if that's on Coop. Or I don't know if it was just a buzz from, I can specifically think about Larry Johnson. Uh, you know, I don't know who that was on. That's just the type of stuff that we probably won't be able to figure out uh, without being inside of their meeting rooms. But again, you know, I think that all in all, I would probably give Nico just in his operation an A overall. I would give our running back room about an A minus. Um, you know, I think that they looked really good. And then for the offensive line as a unit, I would give it, I would give it about a B plus. You know, there was a few things again that we could have got cleaned up. Now, I want to kind of step back because we will talk about these wide receivers, but I want to talk some about the operation of our offense, seeing the tempo going, seeing how fast we can go was huge, but then also seeing that we can slow it down if we need to. That was one of our questions maybe last week or, you know, at some point within the past few weeks, we've talked about that. Okay. And I think that that's a really good sign of a team that is dominant that, Hey, we don't have to always go tempo. We can slow things down and look like the operation. Just as far as, you know, with the headsets and all that was good. I didn't see a whole lot of us struggling to hear which you really shouldn't, that shouldn't happen playing inside of Neyland. We'll see how that works coming up this weekend. Will it be more of a factor uh, on a neutral site game that's kind of a road game? I think that it probably will be, but we should be fine because we're still signaling in. But let's move on down here uh, to the wide receivers, all right? So number one, Dante Thornton, he had a huge game. I was very impressed with what he did. Obviously, three catches, two of them go for scores. Him and Nico are on the same page. That's really big. Then you talk about Brew, him coming back. Uh, I mean, you know, he ran the football some too, but not just with how he looked, I think, as a pass catcher and making people miss and making people pay, but also as a blocker. He's still that same Brew that comes in with that dominance, with that strength. And I saw a whole lot of that from the rest of our wide receiver core. Uh, I think that Chris Brazel looked good. He could have played a little bit better. Now, there were two passes that were overthrown to him in the back of the end zone. Then I feel like he probably could have made those catches. He's got to work on getting his feet set and then going up and getting that football. So that's something that I'm sure Coach Polk will be working on with him, but definitely expect for our wide receivers to have a huge year. Uh, Squirrel White was actually pretty quiet in this one. Only two catches. I don't know how many targets he had, but two for 22. Uh, we know that he's going to step up at some point this season. That's just who he is. He is a dog. I love what I saw from Ethan Davis at the tight end position. He's going to be very special. You could tell that him and Nico are really close. That's big. Um, and I actually want to kind of skip down here. Mouse Kitzman, I don't know if he had any targets. I mean, obviously, he didn't have any catches, but I don't think he had any targets either. He came in early. I want to say it was Ethan Davis first, and it was Mouse Kitzman. And then we got to see Holden Stays. Uh, and Holden Stays had two catches for 13 yards. So, I mean, you know, we have a whole bunch of weapons. I think that Caleb Webb, uh, you know, he looked pretty good. Nathan Leacock going out there doing some things. So, Dayton Sneed looked good. I definitely think that Weary, man, he looked really good. But yeah, anyway, we are deep here. You can also see that our running backs are getting touches uh, as well in the passing game. So, uh, you know, you have to be you have to be impressed with what we were able to do out there from an offensive perspective, especially with the starting guys. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about our defense. So Will Brooks right here is the leading tackler. I think that he played well in run support, but we knew that he would do that. I think he's going to be a little bit of a liability in pass coverage, though. I'm just going to tell you all we talked about it some but I'm probably going to keep on driving that point home just because I feel like Kobe Thomas came in and gave you everything that Will Brooks gave you from a you know run support perspective. He's triggering real quick. He's coming up, he's making plays, but he also looked a lot better just in pass coverage. So that's something that I'm going to be looking out or that I'm going to be looking for moving forward. Who is going to be the starter versus NC State uh, at one of those stages? I think Andre Turnton looked really good. Okay, uh, also talking about Jeremiah T. Lander. He played well, and let me let me just kind of back up here because I want to talk about each individual group. Number one, I think that the defensive line did a really good job in run support, really nice job just being where they're supposed to be in those stretch zone plays, uh, you know, in those outside zone plays, all of that. They did really nice there. We saw them literally resetting that line of scrimmage over and over and over again. They are as advertised. I want to talk about Tyree West. He's looking very dominant. Now, I thought that maybe Tyree Weathersby would be the guy at the uh, strong side defensive end. Right now, it's looking like, Tyree West is going to be that dude, okay? He's forcing fumbles. He's playing with a whole lot of passion. He looks very twitchy. He is, I think, probably going to be the starter. Maybe. We'll see. Of course, of course, we rotate him so much. I think that all those guys played well, uh, you know, from Leo to, you know, both tackles to the strong side defensive end. 
we look good there in waves. I think it was pretty much as advertised. Of course, not a whole lot of sacks in this one because, as we told y'all, UT Chattanooga is going to get the football out of their hands really, really quickly versus us. So we just did not have the opportunities to do that. Now, as we go on back to the second level, I want to talk some, uh, you know, about how our linebackers looked. Keenan Pilly, Arian Carter. I think that Keenan Pilly played a very solid game. He was where he was supposed to be, I would say, about 95% of the time. Now, as far as Arian Carter goes, I was pretty disappointed with what he put out on film. Um, you know, on, on Saturday, I think that he could have gotten to his run fits better. He missed him a couple of times, kind of overrunning plays. So I don't know what's going on there. I just, I felt like he would be a lot more locked in to this game, just from what we saw in all of preseason. I mean, he was fired up. He's ready to go. So he's going to have to get himself settled in. He's going to have to play the linebacker position better than he did on Saturday coming up this weekend versus NC State. But I do think that Jeremiah Tinlander played very well, of course. I mean, you, you know, see those numbers right here. Uh, let's actually bring it back up right here. It said that he had four solo tackles, four total tackles. It felt like he was, you know, affecting plays a lot more than that. Either way, proud of him. I think that Caleb Perry also played really well. Jalen Smith looked good whenever he got in. Edwin Spillman, to my knowledge, didn't play. So, I mean, you know, there's several guys who didn't play. We also didn't touch on it. But, uh, you know, guys like Mike Matthews and Braylon Staley were held out for this game. We'll see what happens coming up here. You know, will they get any burn versus NC State? It's possible probably more uh, of that Kent State is when we will see them play, and I do expect some, some big stuff from them. Now, uh, just as far as overall grades, because we talked about the front seven on defense, I would give our defensive line, I would give them a solid, I'm going to give them a solid B+. Plus, you know what I mean? Just because I think that we played well, but could we have played better? Yeah, you know, I think that there's some things that maybe we could have dominated just a little bit more. I'm going to be a little bit harder on that group maybe than some of the others. Linebackers, I would say from top to bottom, um, I would give that like a solid B minus just because, yes, we look a lot better than we did last season, but I'm still kind of seeing a little bit of the same stuff. Again, with missing some, uh, you know, run fits and things like that. But as far as being really good athletes um, and just getting there and being able to make those plays, getting off blocks, all that, I think that we looked great from that perspective. Now let's talk about our secondary um so you know we talked some about the safeties you know y'all kind of understand where i'm at with them that was one that i was going to be watching very very closely but yeah i think that they played pretty well for the most part um let's talk about our corners i think that jamal mccoy looks really good we're playing a ton of cover three y'all um we knew that they were good, that they were going to get the football out of their hands quickly so instead of coming up and playing more like bump and run for the most part we're staying off coming up making tackles i think that we looked good as a whole on defense tackling the fundamentals all that stuff it was a clean game from you know as far as penalties go and also just as far as the fundamentals of the game i think that we looked really good in all those aspects everywhere offense defense special teams but also um you know just kind of going back to the corners i think that we looked really good uh you know we had j mac uh coming in uh starting for ricky gibson i think that he played well uh you know they didn't really go to his side too much but he looked like he was triggering quick uh quickly and uh you know he was just making plays i would also say that jordan matthews there was one time when he was playing press, you know, uh, he's playing bump and run coverage up at the line of scrimmage. He's got to work on his technique there because he was beat off of the line. He opens up his gate immediately to protect his inside. But whenever you do that, you almost ole and open up a straight, uh, you know, a, a straight, easy path for the wide receiver to get down the field. And he was able to catch up because that ball was underthrown. But if there's any place that Jordan Matthews has been struggling with in the offseason, it's, you know, on those deep balls whenever he's playing press coverage. So, He's got to get his fundamentals and his technique fixed right there because it does seem like teams, however they're doing, are able to, you know, find him and isolate him in that sort of a situation. And I, I don't trust him right now doing that. But everything else, I think that he played really well. Obviously, if they don't make the catches, that's what you want to see at the end of the day. But he's going to have to get better at that. I would give our cornerbacks, I would give them a solid, I'm just going to call it a solid B. You know, I mean, they didn't make any crazy plays, but... You know, I, I think that they were kind of where they had to be and they did make some plays. It just wasn't as dominant as I feel like it could have been in this game. Now, talking about the star position, guys like Boo Carter, uh, guys like Christian Harrison, uh, you know, I think that they looked good. So it says right here that Christian Harrison only had one tackle, so he didn't really get very many opportunities. Also, we didn't talk about Christian Charles at safety, but I thought that he looked pretty good as well. He, he kind of flashed. Now, let's see. All right, so Boo Carter actually had two tackles. We know that he was sent on a blitz. Almost had a sack. He's got a wrap and roll right there. Like, you can't just come in, try to tackle a quarterback that's bigger than you and not roll. So he's going to have to get used to that to get the guys on the ground. We need those sacks. If we're going to send you, you need to not just affect them getting the ball out of their hands quickly, but you got to keep them from getting it out, period. 
because I mean, we all know that once the ball's in the air, anything can happen. So that would be my only knock, but I think that they both looked really good. I would give our star position, I'd give them a solid B. Um, you know, I guess they just did what they had to do. Nothing really stood out to you. And I would give our safeties, uh, if I haven't already given them a grade, I, I can't remember if I did or not, but I would give them a B as well. So all in all, man, there is some room for improvement with everyone. I think that the special teams looked really good. Obviously, Jordan Ross getting a uh, blocked punt for six. That's really big for him, and he's going to be a stud. We've got a lot of really good young talent on this team, and I hope that we will continue to rotate in, guys. Was happy that we did that, but this is a team, y'all. Like I said, I feel like this could be playoff bound. We'll see how we look coming up this weekend versus NC State. All right, now let's flip the page to NC State's offense. This is going to be their numbers versus Western Carolina, who was actually ranked lower than UT Chattanooga was last week. So I think that that should kind of tell you a lot about the difference in the way that NC State handled their game versus a team very similar to UT Chattanooga, uh, you know, compared to what we did to UT Chattanooga. Like, you know, we blew them out. We could have beat them by 200 points if we really wanted to. That game was well in hand, uh, really in the first quarter. But by halftime, you know, some of these numbers that you're seeing from NC State's offense, uh, we'd already kind of put that up, especially with the passing numbers. We all know that Nico did break a Tennessee record for the most yards in a half. But I will digress. Let's go ahead and go through these numbers. So for their total offense, what you see right here is they ran 73 plays, uh, but they had 522 yards in this game, 7.15 yards per attempt, and they scored 38 points as far as the passing uh, numbers go. They had 40 passes that they attempted. That was good for 318 yards with 7.95 uh, yards per attempt. And then three touchdowns in that game. They also threw one interception. Uh, they were good for about 65% completions. Now on to the rushing numbers. They ran the ball 33 times for 203 yards, 6.2 yards per carry, two touchdowns on the ground, and they also gave up one sack in this one. So not a whole lot, you know, again, that you take away from this, just outside of the fact that whenever you're looking at these numbers, like we said, for the passing, it took them four quarters to get this many yards. I think that Grayson, uh, you know, Grayson missed several, several people who were open. And we talked about that some on what, Saturday or Friday, whatever day it was. We've already talked about it. But yes, I mean, they left a lot of meat on the bone. They just weren't executing at the highest level. I would expect that they will be a lot sharper coming up this weekend versus our volunteers. So you can almost take this stuff with a little bit of a grain of salt. I think their wide receivers were getting open. You know, I think that their tight ends, we'll kind of talk about some of the star players here uh, in just a minute. But I think that they did a good job with their scheme um, of just kind of getting open everywhere outside of quarterback. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll keep that in mind. And then as far as the rushing numbers go, you know, I think they had like most of those yards came in the second half versus uh, Western Carolina. They weren't really dominating them up front. Uh, and I'm talking about NC State. You know, the offensive line really wasn't moving bodies a whole lot. Wasn't a very dominant performance or a very dominant performance by any means. Now, let's go on uh, to their key players. And we're going to start off with, of course, Grayson McCall, who uh, is a six foot three, 220 pound quarterback. Uh, he is number two. He's a senior. He's played a whole lot of football. I don't know if this is his sixth, maybe seventh year in college football. Um, you know, it's got over 10,000 yards passing. So he's going to be a veteran. Probably not much that he has not seen. Uh, expect for him, like I said, to bounce back in this one. We already kind of went through his numbers from last weekend. He's a quarterback that uh, he reminds me of, and he's not this sort of a player, but he's kind of like a Drew Brees type of guy, right? Um, you know, he's definitely bigger than he is, but I think that he's got the arm strength to get it there. He's more about the touch. You know, he's more about accuracy, which we didn't see a ton of that versus Western Carolina, but he can also kind of move around. Now, he's going to move more so to kind of like extend plays. He's not a run first player, but he can scoot some, and I would expect him to have some design quarterback runs for Grayson. Biggest question is going to be, can we get to him? Can we affect him and get him off his spot? They do a whole lot of misdirection stuff. So maybe that could slow down, uh, you know, our pass rush some. We also saw UT Chattanooga had some success, uh, you know, cutting our defensive linemen. So is that something that we'll see NC State try to implement this weekend as well? You got to be careful with that, uh, you know, knock on wood. And, you know, that's all I'm going to say. But hopefully, okay, hopefully we can show that we can beat that on a consistent basis to keep teams from doing that. That right there definitely does scare me. But let's come on down to the next player, probably the best player on their entire team. KC Concepcion, he's a wide receiver, listed at 5'11", 197 pounds. He's a sophomore. He is number 10. Now, last weekend, he had nine catches for 121 yards and three touchdowns. They line him up everywhere. Okay, they're going to move him around in motions and things like that. They'll use him as a decoy sometimes. I think I've got a little bit of a beat on when, uh, you know, the orbit motion guys are going to get the football and when they're not. And I'm sure that Coach Banks has got the same type of beat on it. 
Either way, he's a really, really dynamic football player, uh, and we're going to have to contain him. That He's going to be, you know, the primary focus for us in this game. We have got to slow him down. Uh, of course, stopping the run is going to be number one for our defense, but let's move on to the next player, Justin Jolie or Justin Jolly. That's the tight end that played at UConn last season. He had a really nice game versus uh, us last year in Neyland for UConn. So he's a guy that wanted to come to Tennessee, and we I don't know if we told him this, but you know, word out there is that he was too small at that point. He's gotten a lot bigger since then. He's up to 6'3", 251 pounds, but he's still – he, he just really wouldn't fit into our offensive scheme because he's not that physical at the point of contact. They really use him as more of a wide receiver. He's flexed out almost all the time. So, But he is very, very dynamic. You can see that he had five catches for 75 yards. He actually had a touchdown that was called back, and if it wasn't for that being called back, he would have had over 100 yards in that game. He looked unstoppable. Again, he's going up against Western Carolina, but he could present maybe some issues for us coming up in this game he's going to be matched up versus uh, some of our star guys he's going to be matched up versus our safeties and versus our linebackers all depending on you know i think what they're going to try to force us into doing and then what coach tim banks wants to try to force them into doing hopefully we will be you know more of the bully and say look nc state this is what y'all are going to do based off of what we're doing that's what you want to establish early on in this game but most definitely uh we got to stop these Last two players that I just talked about because they are very, very good. Now, the next player is going to be their running back, Jordan Waters. He just transferred in from Duke. I think that he looked good towards the end of their game uh, on Thursday. Didn't look great early on. Um, you know, I think maybe he could have been a little bit more decisive in hitting the holes. And, I mean, maybe you would say that the holes weren't necessarily always there enough for him. But expect for him to, you know, kind of bounce back coming up this weekend and play better um, or, you know, at least be a little bit more focused. I think we'll get a better version of all these guys. It does not mean that he's going to go off versus us. And we're going to put a very strong point of emphasis on stopping their run game and on establishing the run game for our offense. But either way, y'all, you know, he is a really good player. Uh, and then the next one right here, Hollywood Smothers. I mean, you can see his yards per carry average. Uh, you know, that's that's crazy. 13 yards. He's very explosive. He's listed at 5'11", 195 pounds. He's going to be number 20 on their roster. I didn't say it before, but y'all can see that uh, Jordan Waters is going to be number seven on their roster. And, uh, you know, these are two really good running backs. It's kind of, it's almost like a thunder and lightning sort of a deal. I would say that Hollywood Smothers is a guy that they want to get him the ball out in space. Now, again, they run a whole lot of those stretch plays, but with those stretch plays, the whole formation or, you know, the entire line of scrimmage will, you know, shift over, shift over, and they're waiting to find that crease and that cut, and he could be very dangerous in that sort of a scheme for their offense because he is so explosive. He is so fast. Our linebackers are going to have to play downhill. They're going to have to do better than I think they did versus UT Chattanooga, which that wasn't horrible, but they're going to have to step it up a few more notches uh, in this game coming up, but I do feel like our linebackers could eat in this one. All right, now for my final thoughts on NC State's offense. We'll talk a little bit of scheme here. As we touched on right there at the end of that previous segment, they're going to run a ton of stretch zone plays, right? And again, our linebackers are going to have to step up, our safeties, everyone. We're going to have to be able to get into our run fits the correct way. We're going to need for some of our defensive linemen to make some plays in the backfield, kind of blow things up. And I mean, that can really stop it before it gets started. Now, I think that our defensive line should be pretty dominant in this game as a whole, whether it's in run support or whether it is in, uh, you know, pass rush. I think that we will be able to get uh, to Grayson McCall, I would say, early and often. This is not going to be, you know, how it was last weekend versus UT Chattanooga, where the ball's coming out really quickly. Now, they do get the ball out of their hands quick, but it operates off of a lot of RPOs. It operates off of a lot of things that take a little bit more time uh, to kind of get going versus what UT Chattanooga did. And they're not going to be able to do that for the entire game, especially if we get off to an early start with our explosive offense that we can tell is back closer to 2022. If we get up early, okay, of course, we're talking about defense right now, but if our offense or, you know, whoever, if we can get up early on NC State and force them to be a little bit more one-dimensional with that, to throw the football down the field, I think that we are going to have a field day getting to their quarterback. But then, you know, whenever you look at some of their playmakers on the outside, They've got several players. Most of their wide receivers are at about six foot two. They've got one that's about six foot four. I think that he could present some problems to us, uh, you know, in some situations. I don't know exactly what we'll try to do from a, you know, real scheme perspective on defense. We'll probably mix things up a ton. Zone blitzes, we're going to have to go man some just because uh, NC State will overload zones frequently. Like they do a whole lot of flooding zones. So you're going to have to play some man coverage to be able to stop that. But like I said, they've got a lot of tails 
and what they do and what play is coming. You know, I think that they are a little bit predictable from that standpoint. And whenever teams are, you know, more predictable and we are, we'll say anywhere near the same amount of talent as they are, we're going to have a field day on defense. Coach Tim Banks will have a beautiful scheme drawn up for this one. I feel pretty confident, y'all, but again, it's going to be all about stopping that run game first um, because they, you know, they operate a lot off of that run game. We also have to be very disciplined because they will do some zone reads, things like that. I mean, they, they're, they're going to pull out some things that are a little bit tricky, right? That can just get you flowing one way and it's really coming back to the other side. So it's going to be a game about, you know, discipline. Um, and I feel like just kind of reestablishing that line of scrimmage like we did versus UT Chattanooga is not going to be as easy. But I think that, you know, again, y'all, we will be pretty dominant in this one. Those are my thoughts, though. Again, feel, feel pretty confident about what our defense is going to do versus their offense. Y'all let me know y'all's thoughts down in the comment section. As always, thank you so much for sticking all the way to the end. And please make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share it with your friends, family, and other volunteer fans. We'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks. Peace.